Tom Curran, kind enough to join us on short notice. Uh, we have him on speed dial. Patriots insider for NBC Sports Boston. We're looking for a good scandal here. Uh, do we have one, Tom? Oh, it'll, it'll, yeah, it, it, it'll rise to the level of good scandal just because it harkens back to exactly what the Patriots got pinched for in 2007. I don't in any way, shape, or form believe that the football side of things said, hey, do us a solid, go to Cleveland and make sure you wear your Patriots jersey and videotape the sideline during the game because nobody will think twice about it. <laughs> but <laughs> it's just too juicy. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's just too juicy to go away. All right. What are they accused of? Like, it, it, you know, is how serious is this? It's going to be serious in the eyes of the league because of the appearances. And in the same way, I think that deflate gate rose to something that Roger Goodell um, was a hanging judge with. This will be the same to a degree. Again, to a degree. I don't make any predictions on what the punishment will be, but they're accused of having a videographer in the press box in Cleveland who directed, while they were playing the Cincinnati Bengals this week's upcoming opponent, having a video camera directed at the Bengals' sideline during the first quarter of Sunday's game. Bengals uh, staffer alerted the NFL. The NFL said, um, we're taking the tape. Bengals said the same thing, according to ESPN's Diana Rossini. The staffer said, can't we just delete this and forget all about it? which doesn't look that awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, the, the Patriots' explanation is that the Patriots' in-house content production arm, used to be called Craft Sports Productions, does these series called Do Your Job, which is basically, you know, you'd follow Fritzy around and videotape him calling guests and stuff, and then you put it out and say, here, this is how Fritzy does his job. Well, that's what this guy was doing with an advanced scout. So logically, I guess, the videographer thought, well, it's probably a good idea to take video of what he looks at during the game, and he did that. Uh, How you could think that was a great idea and not have the institutional knowledge if you work for the Patriots that if you hold a video camera, you never do that? I don't know. But that's where we're going to be, Dan. But But it always starts out small, Tom. These things always start out small. And then yes. it feels like they mushroom. You know, it, deflate gate. It, it started out small. Then all we laughed this, at it. Yeah, yep, we laughed. Yep. We laughed on Monday. Yeah, Tom laughed on Monday. <laughs> Let me forget. This. Now I've heard everything he said on the radio. Um, <laughs> what I go back to though, and I'm, is Bill Belichick during the Mona Lisa Vito press conference. And I would encourage you guys to go find this in the next couple hours because it's. Really interesting. He's asked about Spygate during that press conference by an Associated Press reporter, and Belichick's answer was this, and I'll I'll read it to you. He says, I mean, look, that's a whole other discussion. The guy's giving signals in front of 80,000 people, okay? So we filmed him taking signals in front of 80,000 people, like a lot of other teams were doing. At the end, he says, so it was wrong. We were disciplined. That's it. We never did it again. We're never going to do it again, and anything else that's close, we're not going to do either. End mm-hmm. quote. So I, that's why I'm like, he thought they couldn't. Right? Yeah. Dan? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. But here we are. So we're done. It's yeah. over. Yeah. Or the Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you wrote the column that sort of laid the breadcrumbs down that Tom Brady would leave this franchise. I, I don't know if it's mutual or by his own accord there. And I, I was curious, did you hear from Brady after you wrote that? Not directly, no. Indirectly? I don't think he was pissed. Do you think that he thought you were accurate? I wasn't told that I was inaccurate. <laughs> if, you were, mean, if you were betting a week's pay. Oh, man. Patriots, retire, other. Other. Okay. Could you see a scenario where Josh McDaniels and Tom Brady are a package deal in Carolina? No. I think that that owner is going to be far too involved for Josh McDaniels to think that's a great landing spot. However, given Josh's, I I might, I want to waver on that just a little by saying, 
he had such a tepid response to his candidacy last year with only Green Bay really stepping forward, maybe he mm. would entertain that idea. Only Green Bay gave him an interview last year. But I think he wants to make sure that he's in a position where he's got you know, all the sway and Marty Herney's there. I also wonder, with all the struggles that Brady has had you know, in the last couple of months here, does that sort of reinforce the thought process of, you know what, maybe it is time for me to get out of here? On Josh's part? No, on Tom's part. Oh, certainly. Yeah, I think certainly it is because, you know, he's looking at, okay, they haven't gone over the moon to satisfy my contract demands. And what have they done with the money saved? Well, I can't really tell when I come out of the huddle and look around at the guys I'm surrounded by. I mean, I have an undrafted rookie. I have a first-round draft pick who's over on the sidelines because when he comes in, things don't go so good. I have Philip Dorsett, who the Colts left out at the end of their driveway. I have no tight end. And I have Jules, God bless him. And that's it. So I think that there are points at which – that's why I said in the story, Dan, that I think it could be an amicable split if indeed the split comes to pass. And this just comes down to this is Bill Belichick's decision, correct? I think that in the fi- yeah, in the final analysis, it would be Bill maybe having to do some convincing of ownership. But yeah, I think it would be a football decision. Deion Sanders had a, a comment a couple of weeks ago where it was cryptic, but he said he was guaranteeing the Patriots were going to add a playmaker uh, here by the end of the season. Who, uh, who is that playmaker? I think that Deion might have been referring to Des Bryant because he and Des Bryant are extremely close, and he has in the past lobbied for him to go to um, but Dallas. But is he but advocating or is he? Re- I think he's advocating, oh, okay. not predicting. I think it's more of an advocacy than a prediction. Um, maybe they do sign him, but how's that help? I have no. I idea. mean, they had Josh Gordon, they had uh, Demarius Thomas. I'm not even going to mention Antonio Brown because what he did to shoot his way out of town, people he's uh, conveniently forgetting. He threatened <laughs> the children of the woman who wasn't even really accusing him in a Sports Illustrated story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it just it's, it buggers the mind, Dan. Yeah, but you have guys in, in that locker room who were saying, hey, we're okay with having him back. Right? Right. Right. Okay. But then since, since then, I mean, they were all okay with having him back as a football player, but I think that they don't have to weigh what damage that does to the brand of the New England Patriots when a player is on the team who has done something like that. Yeah. They just want to win the football games, and I don't blame them. Do your job. Your job is to win the games. If you need good players around you, do that. If you're Robert Kraft, the job is to protect the brand as well to make sure that it is marketable, and having him on the field detracts from that. So that's where the rubber met the road with that decision. Tom, it's good to talk to you again, as always. Are we done again as that fast? Well, am I going to see you at the Super Bowl? Sure. Yeah. Who will you be covering? Well, it's going to be <clears> – I would imagine it's probably going to be a Ravens, uh, a Ravens 49ers rave. Oh, okay. Don't you think? It's starting to look like that, but, you know. we Weird got a, things happen in the postseason. Yeah, because can you see a scenario where, you know, the Patriots have lost to the Chiefs, they've lost to the Texans, they've lost to the Ravens. Can that be a positive for this team the next time around, whoever they meet? Only defensively. Only defensively. Okay. I don't care who they're playing in terms of what they can do offensively. They can't get over 20 points right now. I'll be stunned if they get over 20 points more than once in the final three games here. And they haven't done it in a couple of weeks. So, well, they got 22 last week against Houston, but anyway. How much will it go. hurt, though? you got to go. I, I didn't mean to make Wait, wait, wait. No, no. How much will it hurt if Garoppolo wins the Super Bowl? It shouldn't hurt because the Patriots got their post-Garoppolo Super Bowl win last year and a post-Garoppolo Super Bowl appearance. But you know how we are up here with Green. I know, but you feel, you're feel you yelling and it feels like you're being defensive. I was just asking a question. Do you, do I'm only defensive because I just think it, it made perfect sense to move on from Jim Jim. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Tom. All right. Goodbye. Uh, all right. I'll see you in a couple of months. Yeah. Well, not a couple Next of months. Mu- yeah. At the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. All right. All right. See you. Thanks for having me. All right.
I can't miss you if you don't go. That's uh, Tom Kern, NBC Sports, Boston. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.